Thanks for joining us on The Big Story. The Prime Minister's office has swung into action to fix the troubles of the power industry. First, the PMO directed Coal India to sign fuel supply agreements by March 2012. And today, India's top power producers will meet the Principal Secretary to the PMO to work on the roadmap. On The Big Story, we ask, will the PMO solution work? Secondly, where is the coal going to come from and who will pay the price and at what cost? So here's the agenda for the meeting today between Palok Chatterjee and private power companies. They will discuss the mounting scarcity of coal, falling KGD6 gas output, rising import costs and the FSAs of course. Let's in fact go, go out across to Priyank Lakia, a reporter, to give us a sense of all the concerns for this sector. Priyank. Well, let's start off with a couple of news developments and a few concerns that we've been tracking as far as the power space is concerned over the last couple of quarters and in fact the uh, uh, concerns plaguing the sector over the last couple of years as well. Now first up in terms of news developments as you mentioned you had uh, where uh, the government actually stepping in rather the PMO stepping in saying CIL coal India to sign in the FS is assuring 80% of coal supplies. Now the uh, coal supply agreements will be actually for uh, projects commissioned by December 2011 and FSAs for those projects will be signed uh, will be required to be signed by March 2012. Now the implication of this and rather what's important in these developments here is that you expect uh, only selected power plants to actually get coal for the 12th plant itself. Now apart from this, the other focus area here is going to be how will Coal India actually be providing for all this because we also heard the management coming from Coal India and common it's going to be difficult with the kind of clearances not coming across that swiftly and the fact other important angle of those developments is we also made a comment saying Coal India will have to import any shortfall of coal if there is. Now the implication, uh, the impact which one needs to watch out here is in terms of what kind of pricing mechanism comes into play when we talk about import of coal. That's one development. A couple of months back you also had the Shunglu committee which spoke about the SEB issue which again is a major issue for a simple reason. In the last five years the SEBs have cumulative losses of nearly 82,000 crores is the kind of figure that we're talking about. That's the cumulative loss which we're talking about in the last five years that SEBs have actually accumulated. In 2010, losses to that 57,000 crores over the Shumlu committee came up. Now, there are various recommendations which they put in, saying the SP with a uh, with line of credit from RBI to buy distressed loan <coughs> sorry for that, loan of discoms, improving quality of accounts via various methods, making it a more periodic checking method, all these, but the, impl uh, the implementation of these recommendations is going to be another talking point and any clarity more, or more so from there is going to be awaited. Apart from that, on the 12th plan itself, you're expecting some kind of a cut coming in because remember the ambitious target right now that the government is working with of is nearly 100 gigawatts for the 12th plan. There have been various reports indicating that target could actually be reduced. That's going to be another key factor to watch out for. Apart from that, coal block auctioning, sale of ex excess captive coal, that's another talking point and more right. importantly, tariff issues also. Priyank, thanks so much for that. In fact, uh, we spoke to two important players, NTPC and Tata Par. Let's in fact listen in to NTP's Arupra Chaudhary on what he has to say as far as these coal supply agreements and the gas supply agreements are concerned. Our plans B's on gas will depend on my buyer. If I generate from imported gas and nobody buys, what's the fun in having plan B? So at the moment, I, I will not say there is any plan B. If there is a plan B, it depends on if a consumer wants that he would like to buy power from gas imported, I can start. In fact, Kainkulam can start straight away. In fact, all my gas plants today are running at an average of about 70% PLF. I have another 20-25% which I can run with imported gas. But I should have the demand for the imported gas. So why should I have a plan B for capacity addition in imported gas when my domestic capacity is underutilized? And if they want an imported gas, I can run those on a higher capacity. Right, sir, uh, you've been talking about the coal issue as well. You know, irrespective of companies, two issues that are bogging the power sector, one is the land acquisition part, and second is the coal, acute coal shortage that we are seeing. From that particular standpoint, from NTPC's point of view, sir, what is the strategy or how are you looking to meet this issue? As far as coal is concerned, we have enough mines now to meet our requirement by at least 30%, if not more. What Coal India is giving us today and what the government has now ordered to commit FSA, that with about normal increase of 3 to 4 percent would suffice for our requirement from Coal India. We will keep on importing 10 percent coal. Uh, this time we have started ourselves. There has been a tremendous saving in cost. 
So we will probably encourage Baidis go forward and import more. We are also looking at having a long-term tie-up for coal import. So I think with the 10% imported and uh, Coal India's increased uh, capacity, commitment to FSA that they are signing, that they're going to sign after a long time, and our own mining activities and with the, uh, with the thrust now to increase production from the existing mines. Uh, I'm sure we'll be meeting our coal requirements by end of 12, up to the end of 12th plan or even beyond. So I don't see that as a major issue. Uh, I, I, I see, uh, uh, what I see as a major issue is probably Coal India's uh, increasing their capacity of production which uh, is a major issue and which I don't think is impossible. Uh, only a will is required and of late uh, there has been enough signals from the Coal India and the Coal Ministry that they are willing to increase the production. So Coal India, uh, Coal India uh, went ahead and said that maybe, uh, you know, if they can't sort of increase their production, uh, they, uh, the Prime Minister's office has said that they should import it and then meet it. To which Coal India's answer was, it's not like they haven't tried it earlier, but there haven't been firm orders from uh, you know, power producers really coming in. Do you think there is a market in terms of, uh, you know, really buying imported coal from Coal India, if Coal India does it, uh, you know, for no, producers? No, Coal India cannot substitute what has been uh, mandated to them now with imported coal. If they do that, then of course the price of power will increase. Right. At the moment, Coal India is mandated to supply a certain amount of coal for all the MOUs that they have signed all the projects which are going to get commissioned by 15-16. So that they, they have to give domestic coal. Beyond that, they should import coal. Why not? They are the experts in coal imports. If they are able to get us, we have in fact mandated them to import 4 million tons of coal for yes. us, but they have not been able to do so. If they are in a position to import coal, we will be very happy to buy it from Coal India. We should. Why should we go into the paraphernalia of importing coal when it is not our core competence. All right, that was NTPC. Joining us to discuss this uh, on this show today, Arvi Shahi, former past secretary, also joining us, Ashish Sethia from Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Gentlemen, many thanks for joining us. Mr. Shahi, I'll start with you. You know, the core issue at this point in time is about how much price one would pay and who is going to share that burden. India might become the highest importer of coal if this plan goes through. Uh, do you think the solution worked out by the PMO is feasible? And who is probably going to share this burden? I think PMO is on the right line. It is quite clear that Coal India will not be able to increase its production radically because last two years the production has been stagnant at around 431 million tons. So uh, twin actions would be necessary. Coal India should be pressurized to increase the production by emergency production plan in the short run, like they did in the year 2005-2006. That is one. Coal India should be asked to appoint mine development operator for 25 years, 30 years, so that their own production is supplemented by at least 10-15% of their production by mine development operator. But in the short run, I do see the possibility of a substantial import. NTPC and large power generating companies could import on their own, but for small state generating companies and private companies, maybe Coal India could be asked to coordinate the import, could coordinate the import, and it should be made clear that whatever is the extra price of coal through import route is a pass through from generator to the distribution company, and the regulators in the states should be quite clear that whatever is the extra burden of import of coal should be a pass-through in the retail tariff. If that clarity is brought about, there is no reason why we should not run the power plants at uh, maximum capacity. So I think there is some degree of clarity necessary, and I presume and I understand this clarity is available in the PMO. I had a meeting a couple of weeks back with the principal secretary of the prime minister and made some suggestions. He was quite clear that the power producers must be facilitated to have coal at least 80% of their requirement, 80-85% of their requirement. I mean, right. some formula that is being worked out, it's on the right line according to me. Right, Ashish, come in on this. You know, if the, import, if the pricing of the imported coal has to come under the new supply agreements, 
you know, what's stopping the producers from directly importing coal themselves rather than going through Coal India and asking them to import it for them? Um, Harsha, it basically is a matter of how the imported coal will be priced. Um, I think, you know, while there is some clarity on what Coal India needs to do in terms of imports, uh, there is not enough clarity on how the imported coal will be priced. Now, there could be multiple options that Coal India can, uh, you know, have. For example, uh, you know, the imported coal, uh, the additional price uh, difference between the imported and domestically regulated rates could be passed on only to the plants that for which the import is being done. Uh, that means that only a certain amount of states and certain retail customers will be impacted uh, because of this import. The next option is to probably uh, increase the uh, sort of regulated price of uh, supply from Coal India, uh, you know, given this increased uh, import rate uh, and pass on the cost across various sectors, including the power sector to which uh, the miners supply coal too. Uh, so that's another, you know, mechanism. And the third is obviously, you know, some kind of a government subsidy, uh, which could come through certain budget reallocation. So, uh, you know, it is not extremely clear on uh, what is going to happen uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the pricing mechanism that will be uh, chosen in, for this particular issue. So we'll we'll have to uh, basically wait and watch. I get that. Now, if uh, if a company wants to, a power producer company wants to. Uh, import itself, then you know they're free to do so, as Mr. Shah is saying. But uh, you know, if Coal India can import it uh, at a at a cheaper rate, then they would probably opt for Coal India. Mr. Shahi, you know, you know much has been made about this uh, pooling of prices or blending prices. The, the logic behind that is it might perhaps, in a sense, cross subsidize power, power generation or power, uh, power producers. My question really is, does it benefit? those power plants that depend more on imported coal at the cost of others and therefore is this is this argument valid <clears throat> you see this is not for the first time that the coal is being imported coal has been imported for the power sector uh, right from 2004 5 uh, i i was handling this issue at that time and uh, we had made a formula as to who should import how much of coal so that equitably it is placed on every state. It, it is not that some state is put to a bigger burden, some state is put to a smaller burden. So I think that approach can work even now along with Central Electricity Authority, Ministry of Power and Coal Ministry. As I said, that large producers could import themselves, it might be economical for them, as Chairman NTPC was saying. But for smaller generators, there could be a coordination by Coal India and Coal India could import. And I don't think there is any issue of subsidization. As I said that if coal import cost is high, generators have to learn to pay that price and distribution companies have to learn to pay that price and the state regulators, the state electricity regulators have to have a mechanism that in the consumer tariff that pass through is facilitated. So you're Recently, saying, Mr. Shahi, it, it it is, you, are you saying Mr. Shahi, that is, it, is, it is inevitable for, for this to have a cascading effect on both state electricity board and finally the tariff that the consumer pays will inevitably have to go up. It, it has to, and therefore nobody can recommend today that somebody has to subsidize. Mm. I mean, if 10% or 15% of coal that is needed for the power sector, mm. that is to be imported, and it looks quite, quite uh, imperative and essential in the short run, mm. unless Coal India production increases, and I have given the formula for Coal India production to increase, but that would happen, let's say, two years down the line. In addition to what Coal India is doing, they should appoint a number of mine development operators through international bidding, right. and they should supplement the Coal India production. I mean, it is no good that static production of Coal India is, uh, it, it is harming the power sector. Right. Coal India was having a growth rate of 5 to 6 percent. It is just stagnating now. So they must have a growth rate of 8 to 10 percent, and that is not possible in the next 3, 4, 5 years unless they appoint a number of mine development operators as some of the generating companies are doing and some of the states are doing. So, subsidization is not the formula at all. Right. Regulators, there has to be consensus and I understand there is a consensus. Appellate Tribunal sent a reminder to all the state regulators that look, if the power price has to be more because coal has to be imported or if the distribution companies have to buy cost their power, who else has to foot the bill? It is only the consumers who have to put the, uh, foot Fair the enough. bill. So, Fair annual enough. revision of tariff and within the within the no within the year hmm. adjustment of fuel price uh, must must happen at the retail tariff level 
Some critics argue, Mr. Shahi, that, you know, the crux of the Prime Minister's office move is to break the back of Coal India and the monopolistic manner that it's been functioning. The question really is, why is still there no regulator in the sector? You've got a power regulator, you've got an appellate tribunal in that, in that space. You've also seen that in the, uh, in, in the all generation space. Why not for coal that can sort all these issues out? That is a must. That is most unfortunate that in spite of uh, this decision having been taken uh, five years back that there would be a coal regulator. Coal regulator has not been put in place on the ground that act has not been amended. I made a suggestion that even without amendment of act, coal, in, coal regulator can be put in place through an administrative order. Uh, that, is, that is definite. But I do not agree that this PMO move is to break the backbone of coal India. That is not the point. You know, captive coal blocks have been allotted to a large number of public sector, private sector, state sector companies and organizations. That should also start delivering uh, coal in the system and I definitely hope that that should start happening. But coal regulator is a must. That is true. In fact, you are right that Electricity Act 2003 has moved forward. In Indian power sector is almost 75 percent dependent on domestic coal sector. There has been no movement in so far as the reform of coal sector is concerned. Coal Act has been pending in the parliament for almost 12 years. So those are the things that need to be taken. But we can't say that since Coal Act has not happened, rest of the things shouldn't happen. Final word with you, Ashish Setia. Do you believe if the issue of pricing is sorted out in the meeting with the Prime Minister's office today, uh, the issue, the, the sector as a whole, will go through most of the stumbling blocks that it's seen in the past six months? Do you see clarity emerging today? Um, Harsha, I will treat this situation in a short-term perspective and a long-term perspective. Short-term, probably some of the issues are going to be taken care of. However, as Mr. Shahi has been elaborating, uh, state electricity regulators need to increase tariffs on a regular basis. Uh, you also need to appreciate that, you know, for this there are certain political compulsions that take place, right? Elections are going on in certain states. It might be, you know, tough for some state governments to push, uh, push tariffs up. Uh, the other alternate that, uh, you know, distribution companies have, and they have used this in the past, is to basically do load shedding or cut down power if they don't have enough money to buy, uh, you know, sort of con costly power from the, from, from the miners. Now, that said, that is exactly the problem that, is, uh, that the government is trying to uh, weed out at the moment, right? Everybody needs higher supply of electricity. The long-term issues are still sort of uh, not extremely clear, though. Coal India needs to get faster environmental clearances for new mines. Land allocation needs to be done at a much speedier pace. They need to increase their efficiency, as Mr. Shah is pointing out. And apart from that, there needs to be a coordinated approach. You know, you need probably more railway lines to, uh, you know, supply the coal to power plants. That needs to be taken care of as well. So, you know, positive signals in the short term, long term, we'll have to wait and watch for the sector. All right, gentlemen, we'll leave it there. Ashish Setia, Mr. Shahi, many thanks for joining us on this discussion. We also spoke to Tata Power CEO Anil Sardana on what the group is expecting the government to do today. The first and foremost part is that Prime Minister's office took tremendous interest in these matters. And for Prime Minister to appoint his own principal secretary to head a secretary's committee is itself a big step. So to that extent, what you said is right, that there has been at least a good attention being, being uh, posed on this entire issue. Uh, we have had few uh, news in terms of the fact that the Coal India has been directed that you will go and sign the fuel supply agreements. There has also been a mention that uh, the quantities will have to correspond to 80% requirement and that they will have disincentives if they don't achieve that and that there will be incentives similarly if they achieve beyond 90%. One has to understand this in, in exact sense as to what this correlates to. Uh, is it in terms of what the needs of power projects are or is it in terms of what the needs of uh, Coal India is in terms of supplies? In the past, Central Electricity Authority, which is the body which used to recommend all the requirements for power projects, used to correlate it to the plant performance. 80% uh, would normally correspond to 80% plant performance, its own capacity utilization. So one would have to wait and see as to when the next set of uh, 
clarifications come in, the next set of uh, government notifications come in, that what all this actually signifies. So, to that extent one will have to wait and perhaps uh, the interactions that one will do with the PMO and the committee of secretaries in the days ahead would be to uh, clarify some bit of this aspect. So, let me reiterate this, there was considerable excitement in the stock markets and elsewhere when this, uh, you know, the PMO directed the Coal India to have an FSA with a lot of the people right. who had a certain strictures, I mean, when the plant gets commissioned, etc. Are you saying the fine print has left a lot of ambiguous uh, issues that need clarification and it might not be as good as it seems in the first cut? One could also say that it is not expected of committee of secretaries to articulate language which would address those issues very accurately. One would therefore expect that when the professional set of notifications come in to execute this set of expectation, at that time the clarification is very clear or, or it's completely in terms of the clarity of the subject matter. So, uh, I wouldn't say that uh, there is an ambiguity left out. I would say yes, it requires some bit of clarification in terms of how things will get executed on the ground. And to that extent, one is expecting those notifications to come in in next few days. What are the four or five other things that you will be, uh, you know, taking in front of Palak Chatterjee right now? The list of issues uh, which was submitted as a part of a uh, memorandum to the uh, Prime Minister in the meeting that uh, all the members had, uh, besides the critical issue of fuel supply agreement to the local coal, was also the issue of imported coal, because there are challenges that this country now sees uh, we need energy security, one needs a portfolio of uh, not just the domestic coal and gas, but also imported coal and gas. And one in this entire portfolio mix, one has to be clear as to how much of that will have to be included and how would that get compensated. Because what has happened is of late, since the time the prices for imported coal went up or imported gas went up, and similarly there was change of law in not just Indonesia but Australia, which between them constitute close to about 90 percent of the world coal exports in thermal coal. Now, when this change happened, a lot of developers have left their projects without the next steps clearly being understood. Now, you can't assume that 40,000 megawatt which was being talked about to come on imported coal and gas will suddenly be left behind and there would be no fill in the blanks. So, what kind of compensation are you seeking? So, one has to be clear that how would the imported coal and gas price risk would be passed on. If you do an international study globally, all countries the fuel risk typically stays either with the government or with the buyer. But in these cases, the fuel risk was transferred to the seller. Now, that is not tenable because why I am saying this point is you have seen tremendous changes in law. If the prices have changed, that fuel risk can't be absorbed by developers. In fact, developers would leave uh, with nothing on their plate.